Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topic of Terminal Radar Service Area Airspace, or TERSA Airspace. It's a type of airspace that's often forgot about um, by pilots, and particularly student pilots, they kind of gloss over it, don't, don't really fully appreciate what it is and the benefits of it. And today, in this lesson, we're going to go over, um, again, what that airspace is, uh, how we participate in it as VFR pilots, and what type of equipment's required to um, take advantage of those services um, when we find ourselves entering or nearing that type of airspace. So follow along in this presentation and at the end of the presentation I'll give some examples uh, for you to see and if you have any questions uh, regarding this video or comments feel free to leave the questions or comments down below and if you find this video useful consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. All right, Terminal Radar Service Area Airspace Explained. So what is TRSA airspace. Well, TRSA stands for Terminal Radar Service Area, and it's airspace that surrounds Class D airports that have high levels of traffic. They're effectively a version of Class C airspace that is optional in terms of services for VFR traffic. Uh, they provide additional safety to pilots by offering optional radar services, both for VFR traffic and, and, and actually mandated for IFR traffic. Uh, TRSA services include traffic advisories and arrival and departure sequencing for both IFR and VFR aircraft operations. TRSA services provide enhanced safety and efficiency in areas of higher air traffic. Participation in TRSA services is completely voluntary for VFR flights. Whereas Class Bravo, Charlie, and Delta airspace require mandatory participation for VFR pilots, TRSA participation is completely optional for VFR pilots. TRSA airspace is technically Class E airspace, so a VFR pilot can choose whether or not to take advantage of the radar services offered by the TRSA uh, services. Uh, TRSA airspace is marked by a solid gray line on a sectional chart, as you can see here, this kind of gray area uh, surrounding uh, these two Class D airspaces or airports. Also, a single TRSA may surround multiple Class D airports, as is in this example here. So what services does a TRSA um, airspace uh, service provide? Well, it provides two main services, uh, radar traffic advisories and radar sequencing. So when it comes to the radar traffic advisories, uh, it provides pilots with real-time updates about other aircraft in their vicinity, such as information on their altitude, direction, and relative closeness to you uh, flying in the aircraft. They're in essence a pair of extra eyes to help you spot and avoid other aircraft and thus improve overall safety in the air. Um, the, the second main feature of a TRSA is it provides sequencing uh, for traffic management in the sky. Uh, basically it's providing a smooth and orderly flow of traffic or of aircraft arriving at or departing from the Class D airport that the TERSA is surrounding. Controllers provide the sequencing to both IFR and VFR aircraft. I should say participating VFR aircraft. If you elect to use the TRSA services, the altitude and heading instructions provided by ATC are mandatory, unlike if you were just using flight following. So how do we fly in a TRSA airspace? Well, first of all, we have to identify it on the sectional chart. Again, by that kind of grayed area that looks similar to a class Charlie airspace, um, but in this case, it's this gray uh, concentric set of rings surrounding a Class D airport. The TRSAs, again, are represented by thick black lines or gray lines forming concentric circles around a Class D airport. The size and number of the concentric circles can vary depending on the TERSA. Like Class C airspace, they often include an inner core and an outer ring with a shelf. Decide if you want to use TRSA services. So you've identified it, and then second, you make a decision if you want to use it. Again. They're optional for VFR pilots, however, they do provide additional safety, so it's a wise idea to take advantage of the TRSA services. If you, if you choose to use the TRSA services, you'll need to establish two-way communications with the appropriate ATC facility, normally approach control. You can find the frequency for the TRSA by following the clues in the sectional chart or looking at the AFD for the particular Class D airport the TERSA surrounds. Once inside the TERSA, be alert for other aircraft and listen closely to ATC instructions. Even with radar advisors, you're flying VFR and it's your responsibility to see and avoid other aircraft. When you contact the appropriate frequency, consider it an extension of the Class D airspace. 
provide your call sign and your position information as well as your altitude and stating that you have the current ATIS information along with your particular request. Uh, for example, request to, to land at that particular airport. In regards to the required equipment to fly in a TERSA, it's pretty simple. There are no specific equipment requirements to operate VFR in a TERSA. Again, you don't have to fly or take advantage of the TERSA um, resources. However, if you do choose to receive TERSA airspace radar services, you do need a radio, but only a radio. If you choose not to participate in the TERSA airspace, if you again flying VFR, there are no uh, equipment requirements to fly in the TERSA. You also do not need a transponder or ADSB out services. A mode C transponder nor ADSB out is required in the TERSA as it's not required for Class D airspace. The controllers can usually still um, see your aircraft via the right primary radar services and again provide that sequencing and, and, and um, safety protection in terms of making sure that the other traffic is not near you. Last thing we'll talk about is TERSA airspace versus flight following. Flight following or radar traffic information service is a service provided by ATC to VFR aircraft. Its only um, objective is to provide radar traffic advisories about traffic maybe near you. Um, and it's completely voluntary in regards to you um, participating with uh, following their instructions if they suggest you turn to a different heading or different altitude, et cetera. TERSA services, on the other hand, provide both radar traffic advisories and the sequence of arrivals and departures. And while flight following is all about traffic advisors for VFR aircraft, TERSA services go a step beyond by also assisting with the flow of air traffic around those busier airports, both for IFR and participating in VFR aircraft. And again, those aircraft that are VFR that are participating with the TERSA services uh, must um, follow the instructions uh, by ATC, uh, both in, in heading um, as well as altitude or any other specific uh, directions they may give you. All right, so what we've got here is an example of two TERSAs, pretty much close together, side by side. Um, each is surrounding a Class D airport. Um, you can see that the TERSA goes from the surface to 6,000 feet. Um, then you can see, and this is on the inner core, right around the airport. Um, then you can see there's a, another gray slash blackish ring um, with a shelf that starts at 3,000 and goes to 6,000 feet. And then we have an outer ring that starts at 3,500 for the shelf and goes to 6,000. So again, that kind of upside down wedding cake, just like you might see in a class Bravo airspace. Um, and so again, this is surrounding this class D towered airport. And as a VFR pilot, you can fly through this um, airspace without contacting or being in touch with ATC. However, if you want the advisory services and sequencing through this airspace, um, particularly if you were planning to land at this airport, then it's a good idea to uh, contact the approach frequency associated with this airport and request um, the AT, the TERSA services um, into this space and into this airport. Um, over here, we have another TERSA, same, same deal, Class D airspace, multiple rings, surface to 6,000 feet, then 3,100 to 6,000 feet, then 3,500 to 6,000 feet. And again, you'd enter it the same way. Okay, so that's it on Terminal Radar Service Area Airspace. Hopefully you found this information useful. And if you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video.